Hello, my name is Kirioth, and today we are going to do a cheeky little range review for the Space Wolves. It's time. It's time. This is actually one of the most requested ones, and I don't know why I haven't got round to it until now, but now is the time. And as you can see, as you can see, we're starting off with Logan Grimnar on Storm Rider. Now, this one actually, I've put together quite a lot of Space Wolves over, over the years. Uh, I've never actually had like a plain Space Wolves force. I had 13th Company in uh, in 3rd edition because they were badass. Uh, but an actual just normal, your standard Space Wolves. I've not done that, but I have messed about with a lot of the kits. I've not messed about with this one though. Logan Grimnar on Storm Rider is a... Uh, um, it's a thing. It's a whole thing. It's definitely something that exists. It is an option, should you wish to purchase it. I used to like it because of how absurdly over the top it is, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like I feel like I've gone from kind of quite liking it to just just finding it maybe a bit too silly now. Thing is, Warhammer 40k can be as silly as you want it to be. You can look at everything from the most absurdist angle, or you can take things seriously. It's entirely up to you. I don't know that I was ever able to take uh, Storm Rider seriously. I don't think that was a thing that I was ever able to do. And it's only got worse over time. I think this is the peak example of when you take one facet of something and just... Uh, and run too far with it, you know? This is the point at which they should have stepped back and gone, all right, okay, maybe may, maybe less of the wolf and more of the Viking stuff. Maybe we should maybe we should take a break from the wolf thing. We've, they've got the wolf thing covered. Maybe we should introduce elements other than that. You know, bring them back slightly. Make it a bit less, a bit less absurdist. Because... Uh, this is mental. Like, there's no way around it. This is absolutely mad. This, <laughs> this like, Santa Claus-style sled that he has, has so much wolf iconography, It it's, it, it's not like, you can't even say it's not subtle. It is just absolutely crazy over the top. There's wolf carvings all over the sides of it. It's got a big wolf's head on the front. The floor has got a wolf on it. Each of the shields, like, literally, each of the shields has got some sort of wolf on it. And it's like, lads, lads, you can chill out now. They're called the Space Wolves. We get it. We know. We are aware. But you've got two wolves pulling a sled that is decorated almost exclusively with wolves. And on it is a guy who's wearing a wolf cape with an axe that's got two wolf heads on it. He's got a wolf head over the top of his wolf cape. And on his wrist guards are some wolves. You need to chill. You need to just chill out now. You need to go and sit over there and think, is there some way that we can introduce some kind of iconography to the Space Wolves that isn't the same, just the same thing, but repeated literally everywhere? See, so the thing is, the Dark Angels have got the wing and the sword iconography. The Blood Angels have got the, the blood droplet and the wings. And, yeah, they do show up a lot. But nothing, nothing really is as bad as this for just absolutely overloading something. I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It's got to be said. I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bit much. But. With that out of the way, with that out of the way, we can move on to greener pastures. Because actually, I do like the Space Wolves range overall. See, this is the thing. With these lads, yeah, they are riding wolves. You know, the, the, the Space Wolf thing is unavoidable here. But you know what? The wolves aren't covered in other wolves. And things like the shields, like the storm shields they've got, there's, there's different stuff going on there. The armour isn't absolutely coated in wolf heads or anything. It's Somehow, this is a far more subtle space wolf unit than that. And this is literally a guy riding a giant wolf. The Thunderwolf cavalry, I think, 
are actually pretty cool models. They are, you know, you could class them as silly, but they have... They have a presence that is not anywhere near as absurd as, like, Storm Rider. They flow better. They work better as uh, as models for me. Plus, that's one of the coolest Thunder Hammers you can get. Just putting it out there. Quality Thunder Hammer, that. The walls themselves are nicely done. Like, the little details of, like, damage around the head, kind of bionic implants and stuff... Even things there where you can see that one of the legs has been uh, has been injured and then replaced with bionic parts. I really love all those little details. It gives the wolves like proper personality as well. Like these are not just like throwaway mounts. These are these are these are creatures that are you know battle hardened and cared for and kept healthy. And I like that. Yeah, I do like these guys. They are cool. They are cool. They they're unique uh, in a good way. Now the wolf and I'm I'm kind of I don't mind them. I think some of the poses are a bit rough, but I don't like them anywhere near as much as the original Wolfen. So when the Wolfen first returned, um like model wise, the first time they came back in law and showed up as a model was the thirteenth Black Crusade. Which uh it sounds weird to say now because that's not what happened the second time they came back for the first time. And I have to admit, I do prefer those original Wolfen models because they were nowhere near as nowhere near as heavily stylized. They were they were Space Marines that had essentially gone a bit werewolfy. They weren't quite as over the top. The changes weren't they weren't necessarily as pronounced. I feel like they flowed better than these do. There are some cool details on these. And I will say I do like the uh, like the the weapons they carry. The weapons are cool. The like adaption of having guns coming out of the power pack is something that I'm just not really a fan of. On a couple of them, like these two lads, I don't know. It just doesn't look quite right to me. I say they're not terrible. They're not bad, but. It could just be a nostalgia thing. It could easily just be a nostalgia thing. But I, I would, I would be lying if I said I didn't prefer the original Wolf and Sculpts because I don't know. They just, they just feel a bit more coherent, a bit more cohesive to me. Now, <laughs> the Stormfang gunship. I, I take the piss out of this model because it's even for like even for Imperial flyers, it's boxy as anything. I do still kind of like it. You know, there's the transport variant as well, but it's 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 kind of it's boxy in a lovable way. It seems it's rugged. It's not it doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but I don't know, there's just there is something about it that I just quite like. I'm I'm happy to admit that it is just a long box with some other boxes attached to which, I mean, even by the standards of the other Imperial aircraft, which are also boxes, um, this one is an especially, like, egregious example of that. But it does have a certain charm to it. And again, it's it's recognisably space wolfy with uh, some of the iconography, but it's not massively over the top. It's not, like, stupidly covered in wolves. It's It's okay. It's... It's all right. Now, I do quite like Wolf Lord Crom. I think this is a decent model. There's some nice touches on this. The uh, the way that the like pelt and furs have been laid out on him is 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 nicely done. The fact that the cloak is not all wolf pelt, but it's also just a standard cloak as well, is a nice touch. Overall, I think he looks pretty decent. I think he looks pretty decent. I think you can, you know, you can obviously get away with a bunch of iconography and stuff. It just depends on what else is going on on a model. Like, the amount of iconography on Logan Grimnar is fine, but then when you put him on Storm Rider, which already has way too much, it just becomes overbearing and it looks messy and almost like a parody of itself. This doesn't look like a parody of itself. There's a nice mix of, you know, outright wolf-based stuff but also there's some nice runes and gems. The uh, chain that holds the like the cloak and the pelt on is a nice detail across the chest. Yeah, it's it's a decent model, this one. I do like it. 
Now, the Wolf Lord on Thunderwolf. I will say the only thing I, I'm not a huge fan of with this model is the is the cloak. It's not bad, but I feel like it could also be better. Um, the kind of, like, scaled nature of it, I don't think quite works. The, it might just be the way it's painted, actually, because you've got these kind of flat areas that have been painted exactly the same colour as where the scales are. I think maybe a slightly different approach would highlight it a bit better. It looks a bit messy. It kind of looks like what would happen if I tried to sculpt a scaled cloak, which is that I wouldn't do a very good job of it. But everything else about it, absolutely fine. The wolf he's riding is a is a really, I think a really well done one. The half of the jaw, or like part of the jaw, being bionic is a really nice touch. Little details like that I really like on these. I'm not a massive fan of the guy's face, but then again, you know by now, I'm all about a helmet, not a bare head. So you're not surprised. Overall, though, I do like it. And I like the look of the axe as well. That axe being like, almost like, not battered, but looking more rugged and rough and almost flint-like, I guess. That's quite a nice touch. Canis Wolfborn, on the other hand... I think Canis Wolfborn himself looks pretty good. I do like his model. His wolf, unfortunately, looks derpy as anything. That like, it's like it's the main body of it is weirdly fat compared to all the others. Like if you, <laughs> I don't know why his wolf is so chunky, but like if you look at the profile of that wolf, that looks, you know, I mean obviously it's big. But it looks relatively lean. The bulk around the like the top of where the shoulders are, that looks more like hair than kind of body mass. Canis Wolfborn's wolf looks like part horse. Like it even looks like it's prancing like a horse. That front paw being raised doesn't work very well, and the chain in the mouth kind of oh yeah, he just looks super derpy. Derpy and a bit fat, but with a bit of like a bit of prancing pony going on at the same time, which is a shame because actually Canis Wolfborn looks really cool. That's a, that's a good that is a good Space Wolves model right there. Massive lightning claws, not too over decorated, but enough going on that he's recognisably Space Wolf. He's he's decent, but man, the lad he's riding is just not. He just doesn't just doesn't do it. Of course, you're not going to hear any complaints from me about the uh, the Space Wolves Venerable Dreadnought because not just because it's a Dreadnought. I was going to say because it's a Dreadnought, but that's that's not true. There are Dreadnoughts I don't like. I think I'm just trying to think of what Dreadnought I don't like. Anyway, I like the Venerable Dreadnought. It's a it's a cool take. It's a cool take on uh, on this model. The way the fist is like changed to hold the axe is a nice touch. Same thing with the uh, with the shield. Also, the fact it has an axe and shield makes it super distinctive next to your, your standard Space Marine Dreadnoughts. Um, the wolf skull part of the sarcophagus, again, is a nice touch, and I think it's been done super well. It looks in scale. It looks pretty terrifying. They could have gone well over the top and just covered it in pelts and furs, but they didn't. They kept it over one shoulder. Yeah, it's it is a good looking dreadnought. It is a good looking dreadnought, and the I mean the axe does look solid. It looks like it would absolutely wreck you if it hit you with that. Understandably so, because it's because uh, it's massive. Of course, in the same kit we have Bjorn the Fell Handed, and we also have Murder Fang. Beyond the Fell Handed is, of course, a legend. The only thing I don't... I can say the only thing I don't like about this model is the fact that he is in a uh, a, 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 a Castroferum Dreadnought as opposed to being in something like a Contemptor or a Leviathan, which are kind of cooler. I mean, I say that. I do understand why he's in there, because he was a Dreadnought character before Games Workshop did the Contemptor and the Leviathan. That's why. But I don't know. I don't know how feasible it is to transfer someone from 
a cash referral to a, a contemptor, but it would be nice if Bjorn got something a bit fancier than, ye, you know, ye oldie box nor, which is what essentially he is in. But it is a very cool version of ye oldie box nor. The extra decoration on things like the assault cannon, the, uh, the claws on his power fist, all nice touches. That extra decoration on the uh, on the armor plating on the front as well, it all works super well, and it does it does instantly mark him out as being something a bit different, something a bit special. But yeah, as I say, I, I'd love to see a, a contemptor version of him. I just feel like he deserves that a little bit more, you know, just that little bit more. Murderfang looks decent. I just don't like his face. His face is weird. I have to admit, I don't know the full. I don't know the full like law behind uh, Murder Fang. If I remember correctly, wasn't he just found wandering some like blasted wasteland planet, and the space wars were like, oh, oh wow, this is uh, th- this is a dreadnought of ours. We'll take him home or something like that. That may have changed since I read that. It might not even be correct. But the face is just weird. If it's a mask, then it's odd and why choose that on the front of this thing. Um, if it's not, then I'm pretty sure that's not usually how that works. In fact, I say I'm pretty sure. I'm absolutely sure. It's not how it works for him or him. So why is this one dreadnought just got the like the dude's head poking out? And would it even be the right scale? That head, if it is his head, and if it is his head, why is it his head? Why is he not in a proper sarcophagus? I don't know. It just it just looks odd to me. It looks out of place. It just doesn't look like it should be the way it is. Um, which is a shame, because I like everything else about it. The big old claws look awesome. The fact you've got the, uh, the actual fists beneath clenched is a really nice touch. There's a lot of skull going on, but I'm not going to complain about that. A good amount of skull never hurt anyone. That is a terrible saying. Don't ever repeat that. Yeah, overall, I do like I do like uh, Murder Fang, but uh, just the head is a, the head is a choice. Also, they called him Murder Fang. Like, really? <laughs> Why? Why would you pick that name? Unless that was the name that he came with. And it was written somewhere, and they were like, oh, wow, someone else called him Murderfang. I guess that's what he's called. Just makes me think of... Uh, um, me- me- nah, I can never say it. Metalocalypse. William Murderface, Murderface, Murderface. Space Wolf's Pack. This, I think, is still the same kit that it was when I did my 13th company. Um, admittedly, I did mix this kit with... Chaos Space Marines, but it is it is a cool kit. There's a lot of cool options in here. Lots of nice little trophies and fancy bits to uh, to decorate and customize. More bare heads than uh, I, th- I think. I think this has got more bare heads than like your standard tactical kit as well. With it being with it being Space Wolves and the fact that they like to uh, get the faces out and about in the fight. Never been a fan of the Storm Shield out of this kit, but again, the Thunder Hammer is pretty cool. Maybe this isn't the same kit, actually. I don't think I had access to that Thunder Hammer. No, I don't think I did. Mind you, it would be nice if such things were updated since 3rd edition. It's just some stuff <laughs> clearly, you know, hadn't been for quite a long time. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. It, I think it's a solid kit. I think it's a solid kit. There are like there are bits I recognise and bits that I don't recognise, but that could just be because it was a very long time ago. A very long time ago. The helmets with the runes on them, I do like. I do like that detail. Yeah, yeah, I like that squad. It's a good squad. We've also got the uh, the blood claws. Which is home to my least favourite hairstyle in 40k. Which is the uh, the one where, for some reason, half his hair is spiked and really long. And the other half is short. Where did that idea even come from? Who, who came up with that? Who did it? Who, who picked that option? 
again, loads and loads of little little odds and ends in this kit. I have assembled a blood squad, a blood blood claws squad, quite a long time ago for a friend, and I remember I remember liking it. Now onto a kit that I know pretty damn intimately at this point. The Wolfguard Terminators. Love this kit. Absolutely love it. When I made my big like 20 something Terminator army. I had two boxes of these. Uh, because they're just cool. It's, it's a good kit. It's a good kit with some really good options. Really stand out from, from normal Terminators. And for the most part pretty easily kit bashed with other Terminator kits. Some of the Space War parts and Dark Angel Terminator parts like Deathwing parts don't get along, uh, which is hardly surprising because there's a lot of decoration on both. But you can uh, you can mess around and and kind of get something out of the two. It takes a little bit of hacking away in some areas, but yeah, the, the the added decoration onto the Terminator armor makes a huge difference to them. Gives gives them such a like such a big amount of personality and because uh because there is the one kit for both like for both loadouts be it assault or just standard terminator loads and loads of weapons options in this kit you end up with a with a bunch of spares which is really nice really good for the bits box i do somewhere <laughs> i think it's probably in the loft have a box of fenrisian wolves that i've never assembled that i was going to use for dnd &D. And then I just never got around to do anything with them. I should dig them out. I'm really curious to see how these things go together. Because I quite like these. I think these are good These are good models. They, they look well sculpted. They look pretty natural. The poses are pretty nice. There's a good variation between each of them. Overall, I like these guys a lot. I should dig them out and put them together. Looks like mm, them being in halves all the way through, including the heads, I feel just my gut instinct looking at that is that you need to get the fit super clean or you're going to have to do some uh, some liquid green stuffing. But, yeah, that I think they're nicely designed. I think they're well done. The Cyberwolf looks all right as well. The Cyberwolf does look okay. It's perhaps a tad overdone in some areas. <laughs> um, I'm thinking specifically that bit of metal plate with the, the actual ribs showing. That feels like a stylized thing. Why you wouldn't just put a standard metal plate there instead of have an extra weak spot? It's like, I know it's only a small thing, but it I don't know. For some reason, it's, it stands out to me because everything else is quite utilitarian there's a little bit of armor over the front of the uh the claws there but everything else is pretty kind of bare metal and whatever that feels strangely stylized compared to what else has been done to it it does look cool though although actually no i say that you have got that bit of uh that bit of gem there so no maybe a bit a bit of decoration isn't maybe it's not maybe maybe it's fine maybe it's fine after all Looks angry though. I mean, well, can you blame it? Look at it. It's missing so many parts. Is this animal cruelty at this point? Probably best not to go down that to go down that route. <laughs> so let's do uh, let's do a little bit of spot the difference now. So this is uh no 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 Stormcaller. Mr. Stormcaller, we'll call him. Uh, and this is also Mr. Stormcaller. Now can you guess which one's new? You already know which one's newer. It's the one in Terminator armor. This model looks great. This is a really cool model. Tons of personality, nice decoration, very good pose. Even for a Terminator, his head doesn't look too far up. I think his head is actually relatively reasonably placed, given the issues with uh, with just Terminators as a whole, with the whole shoulders being like above and behind the ears thing that they have. Actually, not too noticeable with this one. The uh, the Raven familiar it looks quality, especially with his bionic eye. Overall, overall a solid model. 
the old one very much a product of its day. Um, the this little pet bird there looks not quite of the same standard. Uh, it looks somewhat somewhat static and dead. It looks like a stuffed bird. My favourite thing about this model is the fact that the bird and the man are doing the same pose. I'm assuming that everyone has already picked up on that, and that's the first thing everyone sees. But if it's not, and I've now ruined this admittedly pretty old version, um, then I do apologise. But yeah, they are totally doing exactly the same pose, which is just kind of funny, to be honest. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. <laughs> Rune Priest is getting on a little bit, but I don't, I don't think it's a bad model. I don't think it's a bad model. It's pretty solid all round, to be fair. Some of the fur is a little bit rough. It's a little bit weirdly textured. But uh, overall, overall pretty good. The axe is a bit plain, maybe. But then, everything else is nicely detailed. It's not completely over the top. It's not completely uh, like clustered and cluttered. It's actually got a relatively high amount of restraint, given uh, given what he is. Looks good. Looks all right. The Grey Hunter with Wolf Standard, I think, is definitely past his prime now. The face is... I mean, those are some gorgeous flowing locks, don't get me wrong. But the face overall could maybe do with a little bit of a... A little bit of a change there. The standard's cool, even if the wolf's head on top is a bit... Again, a little bit derpy. Although all the runes on the armour, I really like that. That's a cool touch. The added, the extra runes, but not like a vast amount of wolf's head, is is a nice and refreshing change from uh, especially especially some of the newer some of the newer stuff they tried with characters that were just plastered in them. I'm looking at you once again, Mr. Grimnar. Lucas the Trickster overall, I think, is okay. The pose is definitely not great now, though. There is a there's a weird mix of how to. I'm trying to work out the best way of phrasing this. It looks like he should be moving fast, but he also doesn't look like he's moving fast. There's like an incongruence there where the the cloak is positively. It's it's positively billowing out from him, given that it is a thick wolf like wolf cloak. So it looks like he should be moving at speed, but his legs do not say moving at speed. His arm being raised kind of makes it look like he should be dashing forward to strike down, but there's no kind of dash in his lower half. It's like his upper half is going full speed. But his lower half is just doing a slight jog forward. The fact that one of the feet is almost kind of in the other shin guard is is not ideal either. Like that, it's a weird choice. That is a weird choice, to be honest. It just looks a bit static. It looks a bit static, but it looks like they were trying to make it not static. Which in some ways is worse than just having it be flat out static to begin with. Ulrich the Slayer just looks awesome. Not really got any complaints about Ulrich the Slayer. I'd say the only thing, and it's it's minor and doesn't really matter, uh, is his helmet looks about the same width as his head. Oh, that's a bit of a violent... Come on, come on. I'm trying to just spin it like slightly, but it's... Uh, oh, oh, there we go. There's a very there's a, like a big jump there. His helmet kind of looks about the same width as his head, which feels a bit weird. And uh, the cloak was, I mean, it does not need to be that thick at all. That looks a bit clumsy. Other than that, pretty solid, pretty solid. There's some nice details. There's some. It's weird because the cloak's got this nice carving, kind of like a. Uh, like decoration on it. So, you know, care was taken there, but the the thickness of the cloth is like a bit a bit much. It's a bit much. I mean does it, it need, that's not even like that's not even cloak thickness. That's like he's got like a like a heavy tog duvet 
hanging off his shoulders. The rest of him, solid though. Solid, so we'll let it slide. Now, R. Jack Rockfist is just awesome. R. Jack Rock Rockfist looks quality. I nearly called him Rotfist, but that would be a noble character. Yeah, he's he's one of my favourites, actually. He's one of my favourites. The little anvil on the top of the armour is a cool touch. Lots of runes all over one of the uh, one of the shoulder pads and on the shield. It feels like they've taken a break from a lot of the uh, like over the top wolf stuff for this guy. Lots more carvings instead, which is lots more carvings instead, which is quite nice. And of course, he's got a teleporting hammer. So what more could you possibly ask for? Looks solid. Also, good head and face. Good head and face on old Arjak there. The Iron Priest looks quality. I really like this one. Really like it. Got a badass Thunder Hammer. The helmet is really cool. The massive power pack with all the cables is really nicely done. It's just overall, overall a really cool model. I've seen people do some really cool conversions with this as well. Pretty solid. Pretty solid, that one. And finally, the Space Wolves Rune Priest in Terminator armor, which I still have. I still have one of these. I do not paint it anywhere near as well as this has been painted, and I would argue that the painting on the Games Workshop store has increased in quality significantly over the years, so you can imagine how bad mine looks. It's it's everything the old Terminators are. Hunched, static, a little bit, you know, squat. His weapon's weird and doesn't look great. And I don't care. I really like it. I really like it. He's, he's cool. It's a cool little model. The runes being, uh, like, not engraved in, but, like, what is it, embossed out is a nice touch. I just like it. I just like it. And we will close it out with uh, with Ragnar, who um, <laughs> is still not available by himself. Anyway, there you go. That is the Space Wolves range. There is some good stuff in there. There's some cool stuff in there. Some of it is a bit hit and miss, but there are some properly unique and well-done units. I think overall, it's a pretty solid range. There's some really good kits. There's lots of cool little extras to add a bunch of personality. The only issue is that some of the characters especially end up suffering from severe over like over complication. Too much iconography is plastered all over them to the point where it becomes less about being less about being a warrior and more about being like some sort of board to just throw wolf icons at, which can kind of take away from the character overall. But as I say, some solid kits and some solid models. Let me know which of those is your favourite if you are a Space Wolves player. How do you feel about things like Storm Rider just being absolutely covered in, in wolf heads? Do you think it's a bit over the top or is that what you like about the uh, about that particular model? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description down below which you can use to support the channel if you would like Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.